Okay, so here's an example. We have a 28-year-old female who suffers from MS and she has a damage in her left optic nerve. Okay? Now the question is asking, what are the results if we shine the light into the patient's left eye? What, are the, what is going to happen to the left eye and the right eye? And what if we shine the light into the patient's right eye? What are the results going to be in each eye? So first thing we got to do is find the left optic nerve, which is located here. Now if we think about this logically, if this left optic nerve is damaged and it's a sensory nerve of the eye, that means that there's no signal transmissions being sent from the retina to the left pretectal nucleus. Okay, there's no communication between the retina and the left pretectal nucleus. That means that the left pretectal nucleus will not get activated and we're not going to have neither of these two pathways. So both eyes are going to remain the same they will not constrict. Okay, So the answer will be if we shine the light into the left eye there is no change in the left eye and there's also no change in the right eye. Now what if we shine the light into the patient's right eye? Well this eye is normal because the question only mentioned the left optic nerve and since the right optic nerve is normal okay then the signals are going to be sent from the retina to the right pretectal nucleus and then we're going to have both our pathways which is going to end up contracting both sphincter muscles of both eyes leading to constriction okay so we're going to have uh, constriction of the left eye okay and also constriction of the right eye Now let's give another example. Now in this example we have the same patient but now the damage is in the left pretectal nucleus. So this is the left pretectal nucleus and really this is saying same thing as there's a damage in the left optic nerve because the results going to be exactly the same and here is why. The signals are going to be sent from uh, the retina through the left optic nerve which is not damaged in this case and they're going to travel to the left pretectal nucleus now since our left pretectal nucleus is damaged that means that we're not going to send any more signals to either pathways so both eyes are going to remain the same okay so again light in the left eye the left eye is going to remain the same there's no change and the right eye is also going to remain the same okay what if we shine the light in the right eye? Well, this pathway is normal, okay? The right pretectal nucleus is normal, the right optic nerve is normal, and the ocular motor, everything else is normal. So yes, we're going to see results. We're going to see constriction of the left eye, and we're also going to see constriction of the right eye. Okay, here's another example. Again, we have the same patient, but now the damage is in the left edinger westphal nucleus, which is right here. Now, what is going to happen if we shine the light in the left eye? The signals are going to travel through the left optic nerve, go to the left pretectal nucleus, and from here we're going to have two pathways. One pathway, we're going to send signal from the pretectal nucleus to the left edinger westphal nucleus, which in this case is damaged, okay? So there won't be any signals being sent beyond this point. So the left eye is going to remain unchanged. Okay. So the left eye, there's no change in the left eye. What about the right eye? Well, the second signal is going to be sent from the left pretectal nucleus. It's going to cross over and go to the right edinger westphal nucleus and then go all the way through to the right sphincter muscle of the eye causing constriction. Okay. So the right eye it's going to constrict. What about if we shine the light in the right eye? Again, the signals are going to travel through the right optic nerve, go to the right pretectal nucleus. Again, we have two pathways. One pathway is going to go from the right pretectal nucleus to the right edinger westphal which is normal, okay, and go all the way through to the right sphincter muscle of the eye causing constriction. So, the
the right eye gonna constrict. What about the left eye? Well, the second signal is gonna be sent from the right pretectal nucleus and it's gonna cross over, go to the left edinger westphal nucleus, but since it's damaged, again will not we will not send any signals beyond this point. So the left eye remains the same. Okay? There's no change in the left eye. Now what if the question actually mentions uh, the left oculomotor nerve damage or the left ciliary ganglion damage? Okay? Well, this is pretty much saying the same thing as the left edinger westphal nucleus damage because they're all going to uh, present the same, okay? Um, so if we have a damage in the oculomotor, which is this actually right here, or here, okay, this is preganglionic and this is postganglionic, or the left ciliary ganglion, which is here. See, all these are going to present exactly the same way. And this is why I drew them in different colors. So the left optic nerve and the left pretectal nucleus, I drew them in red because they present the same. And the edinger westphal the uh, both preganglionic and postganglionic oculomotor nerve, and the left ciliary ganglion, I drew them in green because they present the same. And the same rule applies to both sides, okay? So once you get the idea, it's pretty simple. The question is going to be very easy to answer. So let's just do another example of the second type of question they might ask you and that will be it. Okay, so here's another question. The light is directed into the patient's left eye and it results in constriction of the left eye but not the right eye. Not the right eye. And then the light directed into the patient's right eye results in constriction of the left eye but not the right eye again. This tells you that there's a problem with the right eye, okay? So now let's see which answer fits the best. So A, right pretectal nucleus. Here's the right pretectal nucleus, okay? Now, if we shine the, right, the light into the patient's right eye, signal's gonna travel to the right pretectal nucleus, and if the damage was here, then we're not gonna send any signals to either side, okay? So both eyes are going to remain the same, which in this case, it, it cannot be because our left eye actually constricted, okay? So this will not be the right answer. What about the left oculomotor nerve? Well, obviously, it cannot be the left oculomotor nerve because the left eye is actually the one who goes under constriction. So it's working normally. So the transmission from the oculomotor, okay? is working both preganglionic and postganglionic okay so it cannot be the left oculomotor nerve what about the left optic nerve if it was the left optic nerve then no signal will be sent to the left pretectal nucleus and this will result uh, in actually nothing so both eyes the left and the right will remain normal they don't constrict but since the left eye is constricting then we know that it's not the left optic nerve what about the right optic nerve same thing the signal is going to travel through the right optic nerve and hit the pretectal nucleus but since there's a damage no signal will, will transmit through here and therefore both eyes gonna remain unchanged okay but since our left eye is constricting then we know it has nothing to do with the right optic nerve now what about the right oculomotor, which is the last answer? Well, that's the only thing it can be because the signals are coming through the optic nerve to the pretectal. One crosses over and causes constriction of the left eye, which the question mentioned that the left eye constrict once we uh, shine the light into the patient's right eye. But the left eye, I mean the right eye doesn't constrict. Okay, So it could only be either uh, the oculomotor on the right side or it could be the right ciliary ganglion or the right edinger westphal nucleus. So, like I mentioned before, this is the right answer.
If this was given instead of right ocular motor nerve as uh, the right ciliary ganglion or the right Edinger Westphal nucleus, they would have been the right answers. Okay, so right ocular motor, the right ciliary ganglion and the right edinger westphal nucleus all present the same like we mentioned earlier anyway guys this is pretty much uh, everything you need to know about this topic and with that said good luck on your exam